Hey guys, this is Ahmed Al Radi, a podiatrist from Bexley Podiatry Clinic. Today I will be doing some commentary during a routine general podiatry treatment with one of our wonderful patients who has been referred to us for an opinion and management of a long standing chronic fungal toenail problem. I'll be providing in detail on the condition and highlight to you what I'm doing and why I'm doing it in hopes that it will get you guys to be a little bit more curious and informed and in a way answer your you questions okay? regarding this very common condition that we yeah. see on a day-to-day -day basis. Good man. Fungal nail infections or onychomycosis is one of the most common infections we see in our clinic. Of this condition, the most frequent culture that causes onychomycosis is a dermatophyte known as trichophyton rubrum, or T. rubrum for short. Fungal nail problems are caused by a fungus spreading under the nail into the nail bed. Different types of fungi can infect nails, including the dermatophytes, as well as some forms of molds and yeast. The fungus may infect a broken or injured nail, or may spread to the nail from a nearby skin infection, such as athlete's foot. Fungal infections can be picked up by walking barefoot in public change rooms, pools and showers. Pretty much anywhere warm and moist where the public walk barefoot is an ideal environment for fungus to spread from person to person. Today I'm treating a patient with total dystrophic onychomycosis or severe onychomycosis. This form of onychomycosis is at a later stage of the fungal nail infection that has taken roughly 15 to 20 years to develop. Severe onychomycosis in patients with diabetes and patients with peripheral arterial disease increases the risk of secondary bacterial infection, nail bed ulceration and subsequent amputation. Onychomycosis and long-standing diabetes triple a patient's risk of toe ulceration infection and gangrene. So onychomycosis poses the greatest problem in patients with diabetic peripheral neuropathy. In other words, a loss of protective foot sensation. Just as constrictive footwear can cause pressure on the skin in patients with improperly fitting shoes, thickened mycotic nails can cause pressure necrosis of the nail bed in those with diabetes. Sharp, brittle, infected nails can also lacerate, gouge or even pierce skin on the damaged adjacent toes. So in most cases, patients with diabetes often do not recognize these minor ulcerations because of decreased sensation. So these ulcerations, if left untreated, have the potential to lead to secondary bacterial infections as, as previously mentioned. So oral therapy is the most effective therapy for severe onychomycosis, but due to our patient's medical history and other comorbidities, it is medically inappropriate as it has a chance of increasing risk of adverse effects such as liver damage. So with our patient, we are treating the nails conservatively by routine general care, thinning the nails to allow for topical application of off-the-shelf antifungal nail lacquers and antifungal sprays such as loserols and rejuvenal and dactarin and lamisil to actually get down to the base layer and try and clear up as much as possible of that fungal infection. So best practice to prevent toenail fungus. Use proper hygiene and regularly inspect your feet and toes. Keep your feet clean and dry. Wear shower shoes in public facilities where possible. Clip nails straight across so that the nail does not extend beyond the tip of the toe. Avoid wearing excessively tight hosiery which promote moisture. Wear dry cotton socks and change them two or three times a day if necessary. Wear dry shoes that allow air to circulate around your feet. Tight enclosed moist shoes contribute to toenail fungal infections. Disinfect home pedicure tools and make sure the tools used in salons have been cleaned properly, as to say, sterilized and autoclaved. Don't share shoes or socks with others. Don't share nail clippers or nail files with others. For more information, do seek 
the advice of a medical health professional and your local podiatrist. Thank you.